So today, let's look at how we start a new project. How do we frame a project such that writing it is going to be easier as we go? How do we come up with good ideas and then properly expand on those ideas over time? How do we establish a theme up front and stick to it? How do we set ourselves up for success on a new project? Let's find out on Success in RPGs. Okay, so for uh, a, a talk that we're going to do about how to start, let's start at the beginning. How did this come up, this idea for the adventure that I'm going to talk about today, which is called Ocean's Flump? Uh, and it started, uh, believe it or not, with a tweet. Uh, don't say that Twitter doesn't do anything for you because uh, it can. Um, Jameson Tricasso asked on Twitter, if you had the power to create any new D&D setting, what would it include? And uh, Void Rifter said, Ocean's Eleven, but with flumps. And James Intercasso notified me of this uh, incredible idea. And I kind of laughed around a bit with Void Rifter. And then um, he, he said, or they said, uh, this does suggest a crack team of specialist flumps. I have no idea what that would look like. And I, I did. I, as I say here in this tweet, I thought about it for a while. I took a shower, which is a great place to think of ideas. And I thought to myself, you know, this would be really awesome. Like Ocean's Eleven, but with flumps. Uh, that just sounds fun. So I thought about it, but I had a lot of projects, as I often do. There were a lot of things I was doing. And this just sat on the back burner as an idea. And the reality is that, you know, what I had at, at the end of many months was nothing. Nothing but an idea and a concept. And then one day I said, you know, uh, I would kind of maybe like to do this. And I talked to Patreon supporters and I gave them this option and another idea that has been kicking around in the back of my head and still is back there rattling around. And we said, OK, you know, yeah, this sounds fun. This is what you should do. And I just finished running it at Game Hole Con in very rough draft form. Um, so now I'm going to share how I approach that so that you can see how we can approach Starting with the blankest of blank pages, how can we start uh, with this uh, with 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 an adventure? How can we start with it with a blank page and take that forward uh, to create something? I'm going to share my browser, and this is just a, a Notion uh, document sitting here with the title "Ocean's Flump" and some bullet points. And let's talk about how I go about approaching a project like this. Now. It's important to think about the start of the start, which is that in this case, what I'm doing is I'm coming up with something where I have a basic idea and I want to flesh it out and start writing it. But you can have a lot of different types of projects, right? Uh, an assigned project, someone hires us to do Ocean's Flump and they give us some initial specifications. So there we might know some things up front. Uh, a lot of projects that I get, I have just a single paragraph or two that tells me what I'm supposed to create. Um, the advice in this video will still cover that kind of scenario. And, and even when you have pages of things, it's sort of what it does is it takes you further along in this process and helps guide you. But still, I would go through the same process and I do go through the same process. So, for example, when I wrote uh, Re Regent of Bedegar, um, the uh, strongholds and follower, sorry, kingdoms and warfare adventure, um, I received a very extensive outline for that. And I still went with this process to go through and think through what I want to create and then brought in the pieces from the outline to help me flesh it out from their outline into my outline and then continued this process. So, so the other thing, uh, last kind of example I would talk about is collaboration. We're not going to get deeply into this, but in a collaboration, you are doing what we're going to talk about in this video and the added dimension of discussing with your team how your ideas and, and your development are going to work with their ideas, right? So, so what we would do in this, in this document is something that I would be um, discussing on an ongoing basis as I go through this to make sure it aligns with either other parts of the book or sections that they're going to add into this, depending on what kind of collaboration it is, okay? All right, so let's talk about Ocean's Flump uh, and how I approach a new project. First thing I do is I write down my employer goals, because if I've been contracted to do work, as I often am, the first thing I need to think about is what did they say was super important? And actually, surprisingly, a lot of times employers don't tell me what they want. 
And then I have to think to myself, what should they have told me they want? I'll give you an example. Dwarven Forge contracted me to write a bunch of adventures. In fact, they've done it several times and didn't ever say to me, hey, make our terrain look awesome. <laughs> and, I mean, and maybe because they felt it didn't need to be said, but I wrote this down, right? Like I need to, my adventure should make a person who purchased this terrain feel amazing. And it should highlight how awesome this terrain is because it is really awesome, right? So let's kind of just go in and, and just, we're going to at a very basic level say, you know, employer goals. Um, I don't have an employer. The employer is, is me, right? And so I'm the person who, um, who, who does, who's, who's doing this, right? I'm doing it for myself. So the goals are going to be my goals. All right. So let's talk about my goals. And I came up with a series of goals, uh, that I'm going to share for you here. And I'm going to kind of copy this, uh, information in, um, losing the structure. I don't want to lose the structure. Uh, here we go. So my goals, um, I, I'm gonna I'm say I'm gonna paste these in because I didn't want you to just have to sit here and watch me write things. I want you to be able to to understand the things that I've done. But you can refer to the screen to kind of see you know what's in these, right? So, um, so the first thing that that I was looking at is okay. I want to create Ocean Slump is going to be an unusual, fun adventure that runs well at conventions. It's a total one shot, right? And this is, lends itself well to a convention experience. Uh, second goal, I want it to be an atypical play experience. You are a flump, right? Running a heist. That is different. That's, that's a big deal. And so that needs to be a goal at the very top level. Third goal, I want to provide a strong sense of what flumps are about, but the players own it, right? So it's not just like you're a flump and then you forget about it. You've got to be sort of steeped in that flump experience. We're delivering on that flump experience and what it means to be a flump and that you're buying into it and feeling cool about it. You are helping to create that lore of the flump. Um, that's a big part of it. Uh, I want an open play experience. So I don't want this to be an adventure where you're just going through sort of predetermined things and, and just, you know, every room is just like discover it, move on, whatever. I want this to be with a good amount of freedom good amount of, of right choices. Um, and a heist can lend itself to that or a heist can be very like obvious, like, oh, this is how you've got to, you know, get into the getaway car and escape. But no, I, I, I want a number of, of proper choices and I want to create the type of adventure where the DM is kind of playing around with your ideas and, and riffing off of them more than more than not. OK, so that's important that I'm going for this open play experience. Um, and this is a heist, right? So I want there to be the, the freedom uh, for you to, to, to operate while feeling there's this sense of danger. Um, you know that there are some overwhelming odds out there, but you have a clear goal um, and, and you know what, what you're trying to get out of this, um, out of this heist, right? Um, that to me is pretty important. The goals that you see here are ones that I'm going to turn to all the time, and they really only work if you come back to them, right? I've got to come back anytime I, you know, periodically throughout the pro pro uh, project, and really, especially anytime that I hit writer's block and I'm going like, oh, what should I do here? Come back to my goals, and I'm going to see this and go, okay, it's got to be this kind of fun one-shot style, a, a typical play experience where you're a flump, that you're really digging into that flump experience and adding to it um, the open play feeling that I have a lot of freedom and I can I can think about what I want to do and talk to the other people at the table about it, that it's this heist with the sense of danger, but I feel like I've got options. That's going to be a real key, right? I'm going to come back to that. Because this is a convention one shot, I'm going to also add that, um, you know, the audience matters um, and their expectations. They're looking for a fun audience. They're looking for new ideas and experiences that are easy to grasp. So sure, I'm glad to be a flump, but boy, don't give me a whole subsystem to be a flump, right? Like, like don't make me do math. <laughs> it should be easy fun, right? Give me the flump handout and I'm going to start playing and have fun. And, and it needs to be, you know, neat like this. The open feel, um, I want it to be supported, meaning that 
it's not so open that it feels chaotic or that I have no concept of which way to go or what to do, right? So giving ideas from which I pick from are really key. Um, and that it's quick and easy to tell my individual story and make a difference. It's a one shot, right? So I want to be able to be a part of that and dig right in and 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 feel at home uh, from the beginning because I'm only playing for for a few hours, right? So those those are super critical parts of this. Um, all right. So I've got my goals, and in fact, I've even added this piece about the audience. The next thing I want to do is really define the project. I want to know. I don't want to start writing without knowing what kind of a project it is and what the what this project feels like, right? So the next thing that I'm going to do is write down these project parameters. Um, so here's what I'm looking at. This is going to be a three hour venture. Um, that's a nice timetable. Uh, four hours works well too, but three hours is sort of really nice, fun, exciting, and not so long that you get a little tired or bored if it goes if it if it's a little quite you know let's say not perfectly your style you have a lot of fun in three hours. You're probably left wanting for more, and that's not a bad place to end up, right? Um, what are my pillars of, of play here? It's easy to say all of them, but it does really matter, and it's worth thinking through. So when I'm looking at my project parameters, this is an adventure where exploration and role-playing are going to be big. Combat is tertiary, um, and, and that fits a heist where combat can be bad, right? You've messed up if you're fighting. Um, but combat is also awesome. This is D&D. In this case, I'm making a DD and d adventure. Um, so combat is important. And in fact, at the end, that's where it can make a lot of sense to have it come together. So I'm thinking probably the end is I want some neat confrontation. And um, then that gives you that, that taste of that. So you, sometimes players can feel like if there's no combat, that somehow is disappointing. But, but I know that the other pillars are more important. I'm looking for four to six players and characters. Um, I don't want fewer than that. I don't want more than that. That's pretty typical. So it's a typical player range. The players are flumps. We've talked about that. But when I think about this, I think, you know, I have an idea of playing a role in a heist. And nothing says role like character class. So I think that if the flumps are like characters, it's easy to comprehend and you have roles. So I'm putting that right up here in this project parameters. The, the players are flumps, but they're not just all playing a monster manual flump. That would only be but so fun, not to mention they're super vulnerable. So I'm going to do something to make them behave more like PCs. Thinking about the map and thinking about the concept of a heist, I wrote down the map has zones with recognizable themes so players can understand. Um, so this is the idea that, you know, if I'm going to, let's say we're playing underground, right, which is a very flumpy kind of area, uh, if the heist takes place underground, that there would be an area that, um, you know, let's say it's the docks and it's an area that's the mines and it's an area that is the, you know, where the evil creatures live and then it's the ritual site, something like that. And that even there, there are multiple rooms, the players sort of understand these these zones. Um, and just initially I, I kind of spitballing maybe five zones. Each zone could have one to three areas, but they're not all encounters. I don't know. You know, I start like this and one of the things you'll see is I did not stick to this exactly, but that concept is still there, right? And that's what of these parameters are not shackles. They're guiding you. Um, the zones that have to be entered are clear from the start and players choose how to get there and what else to visit. So we'll see how I worked with this, but this is a good concept that I started with. The idea that if you're a player, you can easily go, hey, you know, do we want to go to the mines or do we want to go to the docks? Right. That's great. I also thought to myself, the zones should be separated in some way from your final goal. Right. If you think of like Ocean's Eleven, you know, we've got to get to the vault. Right. The vault is there's going to be a destination. There's going to be a final thing to get to. And that is distinct and separate. And there's some gate or mechanism by which we're going to prevent you prevent you from just straight going to that one, right? You're going to go there uh, over time and that's going to that's going to work really well for us. So hopefully you um, find some value in this, right, of, of how we started. The idea of setting your goals, thinking about your audience, 
establishing those project definition parameters in place really helps frame the project, right? It really establishes the boundaries under which we're going to approach the project and what we're going to add to it. As you see next time, the, the step after this will be to further think through the concept of the project, all aligning these concepts, and then we're going to go back and feed off of those as we develop an outline. So I'll look forward to talking more with you about that on the next success in RPGs. Thank you.